Now on BBC One, the news with Abby Haas. This is Abby's World War II questions. My first question is, did you get evacuated? And if you did, why? Yes, we did. I was born in London six months before the war began. And living in London, there were too many bombs. So my parents moved to the west of England, initially to Bristol. Why did you move to Bristol? My father got a job at the Bristol Aeroplane Company which made uh, engines and aeroplanes that were used during the war. And we lived in Bristol till I was 18 months old. But Bristol, because it had the aeroplane company and because it had very important docks at Avonmouth, was also being bombed. So my parents and I were moved to a little village called Banwell, which is five miles from Western Supermare, and about 20 miles from Bristol. Why would you specifically to help with the war? My father was an engineer and he actually inspected the engines to make sure they were fit to go into the aeroplanes. And he had a stamp with 39J on it. So every engine with 39J stamped on it was in fact inspected by my father. Who did you go to? Only one school in the village which catered for five to 11 year olds. And my parents were very good because they taught me to read pretty well by the time I was five. And I could also tell the time when I went to school, unlike most of the other children. At the age of 11, I knew my parents were coming back to London. And I took an exam, which in those days was called the 11 plus, And that won me a place to a local grammar school, which was transferred to London when I came back to London at the age of 11. How old were you when you first came back to London? First came back to London with my parents when I was about eight year old, eight years old, and we actually came back for Pesach. And because we were living in the country, we were very, very lucky because we could get as many eggs as we wanted. And as you all know, you need lots of eggs at Pesach. So I think my mother had about a hundred eggs in a suitcase. And we got the train from a station called Western Supermare. And the trains in those days were steam and very, very noisy. And uh, I'll leave it there. Well, my first say tonight was very interesting and very different from probably how you remember your first say tonight. As far as I was concerned, all I knew was I was a Jewish boy. I had no Jewish education at this time. So my first recollection of my first Seder night was sitting down with uncles and aunts who I'd never seen before, and my grandparents, who I'd never seen before, remembered. And all the men were at one end of the table, and they were... I now know praying, but obviously in a language I didn't understand. And at the other end of the table, uh, my mother and her brothers and sisters, brother, not her brothers, her sisters, were chatting away in English. So it was a rather funny affair and nothing like a say tonight that you know today. When did you learn Hebrew?
game did you play during the war? That's a very interesting question because unlike today, living in the country, we had a lot of freedom. And I used to go, I suppose a good game would be play exploring. We were only literally five minutes away from open countryside. So my friends and I used to go and ex explore the Mendip Hills, which were very close to my home. What kind of food did you eat during the war? Basically, we ate fairly normally. Um, <clears throat> though food was rationed living in the country, um, we had access to eggs and chickens, so we were quite lucky. The most interesting thing compared with today, um, our milkman used to deliver the milk from uh, via a motorbike, and on, on the sidecar, he had two large cans containing gallons of milk and he ladled the milk out into a jug for my mother. What kind of fruits did you eat? Did you know what was happening in the war? Yeah, I suppose when I was seven or eight, I'd listen to the news. We didn't have, there wasn't television in those days, remember? And the only incident that I can remember was that um, an incendiary bomb, their little bombs made to catch places alight, actually went down our chimney and landed in the fireplace. But fortunately, it didn't go off. And we had part of that bomb as a souvenir for many, many years. But I think it got lost when we came back to London.